What's happening, boot junkies? Ooh, it shakes, doesn't it, when I shut the door. I have to work on that. What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Dog Audio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And I got uh, an email from someone asking for help, and uh, they had a question that I thought would be applicable to the group at large, so I thought I would also answer it here. And I'm going to paraphrase uh, what the question is. Sorry, I saw I saw Casey Neistat do that in the video. I was like, I'm going to try that. Turns out it's pretty cheesy. So the question that I got, and I'm going to paraphrase it here because I didn't have, actually have permission to ask this question. So I'm just going to paraphrase the question here to uh, help us talk about what we want to talk about today. So the question boils down to, I have a certain amount of money I want to spend. I've got my condenser microphone. I've got my closet that I'm going to work in. But I haven't decided between something like a Zoom H5. I'll hold up the box. A Zoom H5, because Mike, I know you recommended that before. Or something like, in this example, they asked about a, a, a very inexpensive uh, preamp called a Behringer Euphoria 202. This is a Scarlet 2i2. Also on the uh, very inexpensive end of interfaces, coupled with a higher quality, more capable preamplifier channel strip type thing that is, uh, and they specifically asked about the DBX-286S. First, let's talk about what a DBX-286S is, and then we'll help, it'll help us decide if this is the best way to spend the 300 or so dollars that are allocated towards this project. Let's start with the Zoom. So the Zoom H5, if, you've, uh, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't seen it before, the Zoom H5 is a portable recorder, which uh, it's got a removable microphone module. It comes with this XY stereo microphone, and it's got a variety of different okay sounding microphones that can be um, interchanged on the top. It's got two XLR inputs that can supply phantom power. So if you have a condenser microphone, you see if you watch some of my other videos, you see that my beginning uh, voice actors studio setup, one option is pairing a condenser microphone with a, uh, with a Zoom H5 because of its portability. The Zoom H5 uh, can act as a standalone portable recorder. It's got a slot on the side for an SD card so you can record portably. Or it has a USB out that you can power and use this as a dedicated interface sound card for your computer. Sounds perfect, Mike. Why don't you just recommend this all the time? Well, the preamps are not spectacular in this. It's a little bit less convenient to use as, a, uh, as an interface at your computer, you you might have you'll probably have to turn it on each time. You'll have to make sure that it, your thing is su supplying power. It's just I find it's not quite as convenient to use as a dedicated interface, especially if you want to have speakers. So this has no real output. It's got a headphone out jack. Is that the headphone? Yeah, it's got a headphone out jack, so you can listen to headphones. But if you want to have studio monitors um, to listen to it, or you want to have speakers, this really doesn't have the capability for that in the same way as some of the other audio interfaces will have. So if portability is your number one option, you, you're going to record, say, upstairs in your closet because that sounds really good, but you're going to edit downstairs in your basement because that's where your computer is, then the Zoom H5, go for it. It's going to, it's going to really serve you, serve you well. If you really want to break the bank and have that same situation where you're recording in one place and you're, uh, and you're editing in another place, you can go way up the way up the up the food chain and look at sound devices like their mix pre 3 which is like the pro grade version of this this is a consumer grade device the sound devices mix pre 3 is the pro grade sort of version of that uh, can record to sd but um, significantly more expensive so if portability is your number one option you can go with the 
the consumer version, uh, like the Zoom H5 or the Pro, like a sound devices Mix Pre 3, Mix Pre 6. You know, there's a lot of a lot of options out there. If, on the other hand, your computer is near your recording space, say within 15 feet like a USB cable length or 25 feet like a good XLR length, if it's all going to be in this one area, your bedroom studio, your basement studio, wherever it is, then you probably want to go with a dedicated interface that will serve your needs. This is going to be able to have this. these uh, interfaces have outputs so you can attach to studio monitors. They have headphone jacks so you still can ha apply your uh, your headphone monitors. You can have two different ones. You often can, uh, depending on which one you have, you can plug in multiple microphones if that's a use case for you. And generally speaking, a dedicated uh, interface is going to have a better sounding, higher quality preamp in it, which as you turn the gain up, it's less likely to introduce hiss or anything like that. The Zoom's preamps are good, but the standalone devices, the dedicated desktop devices, tend to be better. So you have an interface. Now, what you do see recommended a lot is a DBX 286 because this has an even better preamp. It's not terribly expensive. I've got the box here because my 286 is over on a rack. Uh, but let's just talk about what a 286 is. Sorry, got to deal with the lights here. So a DBX 286, we'll just go by what's on the front. So it's got several different stages in hardware that replicate a typical vocal chain. So a series of effects that a voice actor might use to process their audio to make their voice sound good. It's got a preamplifier section, so it's a it's got a very high gain, nice and clean preamp. It has a next sec the next section is called a compressor, so the signal goes from the preamp to the compressor. The compressor will make sure that if you scream really loudly, it will turn it down so that you don't clip. It has a de-esser, so if your mic sends if you, your voice has, a, has a, a very distracting S sound, this section can turn that S sound down. It has an enhancer, so if you want to add some bass to your voice, some gravitas, um, it has an enhancer. And then it has an expander slash gate, which can uh, help if there's background hiss or anything like that. The gate can help manage that by weirdly turning your preamp gain down during the silent part. So when you're not talking, that's when you hear the shh underlying in the background. The gate can turn the volume down even further so that hiss goes go so that the background hiss goes from shh to shh. We'll turn it down. So that's what the gate will do. And then it's got an output stage. <sighs> Sounds great. So I'll just buy this and Everything's aces, right? I can go with the cheapest possible of this and use this. Yeah, yeah, you could, but you might not need to. So let's talk about why I, I sort of ham and haw on that. Everything the DBX286 can do can also be done in software. Inside your DAW, whether it's Adobe Audition or Reaper or Pro Tools or Studio One or anything, they have plugins that you can create a order of operations. You can go from the preamp, you can go to the compressor, to the de-esser, to the equalizer, to anything that you want to replicate that vocal chain and do what the DBX286 does. Here's the difference. Here's the most significant difference for condenser mic users. I'm going to put that caveat in the up front. If you use a DBX286 and you start to twiddle those knobs, you are permanently and irreversibly altering the sound that your computer receives. You're using a piece of hardware to mix paint that you're going to apply to a canvas. Whereas with software, you're mixing the paint in the computer. I don't know if that's a good analogy. Suffice to say that the the hardware, the DBX286, if you use that, uh, that uh, enhancer and you add that bass to your voice, you can't unbassify it. You can't easily undo that in case it, ooh, that didn't sound right. You can't 
uncom uh, you can't re-expand it if you compressed it. You can't undes it if the deesser got it wrong. Because sometimes the deesser will get caught when you you say the th sound in the middle of a word. Also, oh, that sounds like an s. We're going to turn that down, and all of a sudden your words don't sound quite right because the deesser has gotten in the way. Uh, so the deesser will it's going to irreversibly alter the sound as it makes its way, destructively alter the sound as it makes its way into the into your computer, as opposed to the software, which works on the raw audio you put in, alters it on the way out of the computer. There's the difference. You can go back and say, ooh, the, the, the de-ether caught on the th sound or the th sound, and it, and it acted funny. I'm going to adjust my settings, and I'll render it again so that it doesn't catch on that sound. Whereas with the hardware, that paint got mixed. You can't unmix it. you got to go do the take again. Hmm. So, do you need the channel strip if you're a voice actor um, that that has the luxury of rendering later? You're not doing it live. Then, yeah, yeah, you don't necessarily need the 286 type functionality because you can do it in software, and you can do it a lot more with a lot more granularity in software. So, as you get more adept with your software, you can actually make it do even more than what the, the, what the 286 can, uh, can do. I said before, there's the caveat of if you're using a condenser microphone. Why did I say that? Well, the very common trope that you hear is if you use a dynamic microphone, a microphone that doesn't use phantom power to power the microphone, those tend to require a lot more gain. You have to turn the knob up on your preamp really, really high. And sometimes on something like a, a Zoom H5 or a Scarlett 2i2, the inexpensive preamps, the more that gain knob gets turned up to hear the microphone, the more underlying sound gets into the microphone. It's just inherent in the electronics. There's an underlying hiss that pervades everything. And so if you have a cheap preamp, you have to turn it up louder because the, the dynamic microphones, they want they want that knob to be turned all the way up. Condenser microphones don't suffer that. They've got, they've got electricity that, that, is, that powers the microphone, so you usually don't have to turn your gain up much past eh, halfway, three uh, two-thirds of the way, and you've got gain galore, your sig uh, gain <laughs> galore, and you've got plenty of signal to work with. The dynamic microphones, the Shure SM58, the SM7B, the Electro Voice RE20, RE27, uh, yeah, any number of the dynamic microphones. They want that gain to be turned all the way up, which means you're going to hear an underlying hiss. So the DBX286 can provide plenty of gain for those dynamic microphones. So you can crank it way up. The other, uh, and so often because it's only $199, it's only about $40 or $50 more than a dedicated device called like a cloud lifter that's $150, and all it does is just turn the gain way up by 25 decibels. This allows for a lot more granular um, for the preamp section, and it will have plenty of gain. And you get the bonus of having those other knobs that you can twiddle if you want. That's number one. If you're a dyna if you're if if it's a dynamic dy dynamic microphone that you're using that requires a lot of gain. The second is, I always recommend a, a 286 if you're or, or something like it, a hardware processor if you're a live streamer. So if you are if your audio needs to be good in a live situation, then you can delegate all of that functionality of your vocal chain to a piece of hardware so that there is no lag, there's no delay, there's no anything, and it requires no computing horsepower from your computer. So if your computer's busy playing the game that you're live streaming, then you don't want to take some of that horsepower away and have it applying your gate and all those things because all those processes, compressing and, and DSing and all that stuff, that requires horsepower. It introduces, potentially, it introduces lag, 3, 5, 20 milliseconds of lag. So the voice and your lips might be 20 or 30 or 50 milliseconds behind uh, and so then you got to go into all these different settings and blah, 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 blah. And you could just delegate it all to a piece of dedicated hardware. Since it's going out live, if the ether doesn't catch quite right on a fillable every once in a while, then it doesn't really matter because that's a moment, that's ephemeral, and it's gone. 
a- anyway. So you, it's much better. Uh, I'd say it's probably preferable to uh, to do your vocal enhancement in hardware than trying to do it in software in the live situation. So there's your either or. But if you just were worried about having this because it's got the good preamp and all of your vocal chain, I would posit that as a voice actor working in a non-live situation where you're making a recording that can be processed and it's going to get mixed and mastered and things are going to happen down the down the chain, then you're probably better served instead of buying two pieces of hardware, one of them being destructive to your audio, if you wanted to spend more money and maybe go up a level in preamplifier. If you're if you're buying the 286 to overcome the shortcomings of the of the P of the preamp in something like an inexpensive device just move up a level in preamps go to a, an audience id 14 or you know just i i, I say audience id 14 because i like audience i'm an audience user you're listening to an audience uh, i use the audience id 22 uh, you could go to an apogee duet uh, there's a there are a bunch of interfaces in the three to four to five hundred dollar range that are going to serve you for a career Right, uh, the Audient ID twenty two is four hundred and fifty some odd dollars, um, and it's made me a whole bunch of money. Being just a perfectly fine, just a nice, clean, neutral preamplifier that serves all of my microphonic needs, um, and I don't need the the two eighty six under normal circumstances. So the you can. So the point is, you can just go up one little level to get really nice, clean, neutral, good sounding preamps that are going to satisfy all of your needs. And then you can spend the rest of your money working on your acoustic space because that's what's going to matter more in the long run. Then when you've made a whole bunch of money and you put your pennies away, if you wanted to go up to an Apollo Twin, if you wanted to move up to, uh, you know, some of those really high end, you know, you get yourself your nice Avalon uh, 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 preamplifier, then you can go up and you can still use something like your audience as your main interface. You get to upgrade in different parts. So that's a long, long, long way to answer the question that we got here is, should I buy a Zoom H5 or should I buy a a cheap interface and a DBX286? I hope that covers many of the questions that um, many of you have brought to me with that. Um, You saw in the beginning, I tried the little cheesy trick with the shirt. if you want to help support the channel, people have been asking me a lot. Um, I did create uh, the same shirt that you see me wear in many of my videos. I had those made just for me, just so I could wear them in my videos. I never expected really anybody to ask them for, so it took me a long time to just go through. So there's a Teespring link down in the bottom. Um, so if you want to buy a Booth Junkie shirt to help support the channel, I- I'd be grateful for it, but yeah, certainly only if if you want to. But, eh, uh, it's there for the people who have asked for it. Um, but that's all I have for you today. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that helps. Uh, if you have questions and you want to send them to me, uh, Mike at boothjunkie.com. I do try and answer as many questions as I can. You guys might imagine. I get a lot. I get a lot. I get a lot of questions, and I, and I love the questions, but I really can't. Uh, I can't reply to all of them. Uh, but I would like to start um, using them as as information on the channel. So it isn't. So this channel isn't just microphone review after microphone review. I would like to try and answer some of the questions as they come in. So uh, if you have questions for me, Mike at boothjunkie.com is the easiest way to to submit them until I come up with something better. Um, so uh, just go out and. Get yourself your Zoom, get yourself your your uh, Audient or your Scarlet or your DBX286, but get yourself a preamp, get yourself a microphone so that you can get in a booth and you can record something amazing. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time.